And we're back. Anyone's Hunt, Arizona, Archery Deer, round two. And welcome back to Anyone's Hunt. My name is Stephen Drake, and the goal of this video series is to get more people hunting by sharing hunting opportunities that are available to anyone. Uh, we're gonna show you how to get these tags, where to hunt, and just show you how much fun these hunts can be. For this installment in the series, my wife Karen and I are archery deer and javelina hunting down in Arizona. So let's get to it. Darkness falls and we all pray, hoping for the light of day, down to the river. Made it to our first glassing knob and already spotted deer. Karen is uh, getting some footage right now. <laughs> this is the second anyone's hunt on this specific archery deer opportunity down here in Arizona. Um, but this is actually my sixth year in a row coming down for this hunt. I have not killed a deer yet, but here are some of the many reasons I keep coming back. I have not killed a deer on this hunt yet, but I've gotten really close a bunch of different times. A few keys to getting close are, one, this is really obvious, but to kill a deer, you have to find them. And the best tactic for finding them, in my opinion, is to get up high on a glassing knob so you can see as much country as possible. Finding glassing knobs is super easy. You can do this all when you're e-scouting on Onyx back at home on your desktop computer and look for all the high points. And I like to drop a pin on every single high point as a potential glassing knob. One really nice feature about Onyx is that any waypoints that you add in the desktop app automatically get synced over to your mobile app. So when you're using your phone out in the field, um, you'll have all the waypoints that you added. Next tip is to hunt with a partner and use two-way communication to guide the hunter in. Yes, two-way communication is legal in Arizona. Next tip is to glass off of a tripod with your binos. It is amazing how many more deer you can spot when you've got your binos mounted to a tripod. Last tip is if you haven't seen deer for a few days, change elevations. All right, well, let's practice what I just preached and see if we can't turn up a buck. Back to the camper, fueling up on a tortilla. My shot felt really good, but I think I hit him a little bit low. Uh, Karen got some footage from like two miles away and the buck jumps up and kicks, which is a good sign. But man, my left and right was perfect. I took my time on the shot. I just think I might've hit a little bit low. I don't know. I don't want to go down a rabbit hole of negative thoughts. So we're gonna fuel up, give it another hour or so, which will be like, three to four hours of time. So yeah, and we're gonna go back in tonight and see if we can find him. That's 
midnight. We spent the last three and a half hours trailing that deer. Really good trailing conditions because it's just like nothing but dirt. So we're able to follow his tracks pretty easily. And there was a little bit of blood, but he never stopped to bed. He did stop a few times. But that deer is definitely not fatally hit. I think I hit him in the brisket. I think I just hit him too low. So I was up probably two inches. Probably would have got a heart shot. Anyway, super bummed. But I'm relieved that I believe that deer is just fine. So, um, yeah, the hunt continues. <laughs> Let's break down this hunt. This is an archery deer tag good for either a coos deer or a mule deer. The season runs from mid-December through January, and since it covers two different calendar years, this is actually two different deer tags. Meaning, after you've hunted in December, you'll then need a new deer tag to hunt in January. So in theory, you could kill a deer in December and you could also kill one in January. So one big change is Arizona just implemented a new tag draw process. It used to be an over-the-counter tag that you could just drive down to Arizona and buy at any licensed provider, but now they've limited non-resident tags to about 2,900. And these are all available on a first come first serve basis, starting on December 1st at 12 a.m. through the Arizona Game and Fish website. This year, all of those tags sold out in about 24 hours. So if you really wanna do this hunt, you're gonna have to jump on it. Another new change is that if you do harvest a deer, you are required to report your harvest within 48 hours. Along with that, each deer unit in Arizona now has a harvest quota. So once a unit's harvest limit has been reached, that unit will shut down to deer hunting. All right, so the cost to hunt Arizona, it's $300 for a non-resident deer tag. You will also need an annual non-resident hunt fish combo tag, which is $160. As far as where to hunt, there's pretty much deer in every open unit in Arizona. A really great starting place is the Arizona Game and Fish website. When you're on the website, if you click on the hunting tab, then where to hunt, Arizona provides unit breakdowns. and gives you some very specific areas to look for deer. Then once you've picked an area, I'll dive into OnX and look for glassing knobs and access roads. So when I hunt the unit, I can hit the ground running. Arizona has adopted an electronic tagging process. You can still choose to use paper tags, but if you want to do e-tagging, you'll opt in on the Game and Fish website under your account. Then you'll download the Arizona e-tag app to your phone and all your tags, all your licenses will show up there. The rules and regulations in Arizona and really every state are changing almost annually. So definitely refer to the hunting regulations before you come hunt. Shot and he stood up and started walking to the right. And 
he was on the other side of some brush at like 40 yards or 10 minutes and he started kind of walking to the right and walking away so I made my move and he bested me before I could before I could even range so he was probably at, I don't know 65 All right, every day when we get back to the camper for an appetizer, we do tortilla with pepperoni and cheese. Really good. And then for dinner, keep it simple, freeze dried. Day seven, Karen and I came up to a glassing knob we've never been to before and overlooked some new country and probably seen 15 deer, three bucks, and they're all like identical. All four points, short, crabby backs, bigger fronts, and been watching this one. He was way out in the flat and came in. He was probably a mile and a half away and now he's only three quarters of a mile away. And he just bedded and he bedded it's hard to tell from this angle, but he looks like he's in a bit of a fortress for him. <laughs> so, now we try to figure out what to do. So I think I'm going to run down there, try to get within 100 yards of him, and just see if there's any shooting lanes that I can't see from here. Another thing I like to do is I like to mark the approximate deer's location on Onyx, because when I jump down here on the flat, um, everything looks the same. final day deer hunting here in Arizona. It's always bittersweet, <laughs> especially this hunt. This is my sixth year now coming down here and I have not killed a deer yet, but I've gotten so close so many times. Did a lot of things right this year. We spotted quite a few deer and in 10 days got five really good stocks. So and I think the key to those stocks is you gotta spot deer in order to stock them. It's really amazing that you can do this hunt every single year. And again, for those that are interested, you're just gonna wanna make sure that you jump online December 1st and buy your tag because they sell out quick. That said, the hunting is not over yet. We are just gonna shift gears now and we're gonna target Havelina. So up next, Havelina hunting. Well, 
as you can see, it snowed overnight. <laughs> it's not supposed to snow in the desert. <laughs> but uh, we're Havelina hunting now. And I guess the good thing about snow is we can track them. So we're uh, walking this old road system right now, just looking for Havelina tracks. <laughs> Just made it back to the camper. We had a big day, did about 15 miles. And we're actually able to track our mileage with the Onyx app. Uh, it's really easy, just down to the bottom, go to tracker and press start. And when you're done with your day, press stop and it will measure your mileage and your elevation gain. Yeah, 15 miles, I didn't see a single javelina. Uh, the tactic today was just cover ground. We're in a lot of fairly open ground, open country, so we could glass a lot. And it was pretty dang cold and snowing for most of the day, so I don't know javelina very well, but if I was a javelina, I would want to be hunkered under a tree. But tomorrow's a new day, so we'll see what we find. All right, let's break down this javelina hunting opportunity. For this hunt, we applied for an archery only javelina tag that's good from January 1st to January 20th. This tag is unit specific, so we did have to choose our unit. And when we chose the unit, we pretty much just chose a unit that had a ton of tags. And we're like, well, a ton of tags probably means a ton of javelina. We haven't seen javelina yet, but <laughs> that, was our, that was our logic. <laughs> Application deadline is around October 10th for the following year's season. You can apply for the tag online through the Arizona Game and Fish website. The cost for a non-resident javelina tag is $115. It's a really great add-on for anyone that's coming down to mule deer or coos deer hunt. If you don't draw, there are sometimes leftover tags. To get a leftover tag, you have to mail in your application mid-November. As far as where to hunt, there's pretty much javelina in every single hunting unit, except for this one apparently. But pretty much every unit has got an archery javelina season. All right, well, we've got about a day left to hunt, so let's get to it. down about a thousand feet down the mountain. And yesterday we were kind of up a little higher and in the snow most of the day. And if I was a javelina, I would not want to be in the snow. So every day we are day hunting out of the camper. Here is our meal plan. All right, every morning for breakfast, yogurt, black rifle, instant coffee. For lunch, pre-made bagel with salami, and cheese, and cream cheese. Super good. Whole pile of snacks for throughout the day. Gastronome gnome nuts. Fruit, two oranges. These were actually picked off a tree down here. This one was not. And for dinner every night, gastronome freeze-dried. This one right here is one of my top two favorites of all time, mushroom rag goo farfalli. Well, 
Well, sadly, we're wrapping up our final morning hunting here in Arizona. Arizona's definitely become my favorite hunt of the year. The weather is just amazing. Yeah. Bow hunting, mule deer especially, has got such a steep learning curve. And this year we added javelina to the mix and apparently that's a steep <laughs> learning curve as well, so. I think we definitely took javelina for granted and. Yeah, we thought this was gonna be a slam dunk. Like yeah. we, had, we were ready to prepare some meals with javelina <laughs> and do all this cooking stuff and didn't even see a javelina, yeah. so. <laughs> My biggest takeaway would be that if you are headed down to hunt a species you are not super familiar with, it could be very beneficial <laughs> to do a little extra research into their habits, behavior, habitat, um, and how the weather might affect those things. So if you run into different conditions than what you are used to, you might still have a chance in finding them. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> This is the hardest bow hunt I've ever done, and it's also taught me the most. It's taught me that when you are in the red zone, you gotta go super duper slow. Like way slower than I've ever had to go in any other stock. It's always a bummer to uh, call her quits for the year, but already thinking about next year and how to go even slower on my next stock. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that is a wrap from Arizona and this series of Anyone's Hunt. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next one.